Hi everybody, we're here with Dr. Dan O'Neill, who is Hello. the founder and uh, I guess editor-in-chief of the Christian Journal of Global Health. Oh, managing editor. Managing editor, okay. <laughs> Not editor-in-chief, I guess oh, that's we have the one Wall Street We have Journal. one of those, yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, that's somebody else, yeah. Okay. Elliot Larson. All right. So tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about the journal, Dan. I was, uh, you know, this is a project that you've been working on for a number of years, and it's finally. How long has it been out now? Five years. We've been five publishing years. for five years. Now, yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, how did it come about? Well, it came about, I think, with the. Uh, we felt that there was a need to Im improve uh, practices mm -hmm. among Christian faith-based organizations that are delivering health to resource-poor areas. Um, there was a call by uh, multilateral organizations, United Nations, et cetera, to, for Christian faith-based organizations to measure and evaluate the results, uh, to uh, appropriate best practices, and, and to uh, use evidence uh, in their work. And so there's a, there was a call to that. And I think also a call for, uh, from the Christian um, uh, health and development community to um, uh, to share results so that we don't duplicate sure. efforts. So we learn from one another and create community and in a sense of way of, in a sense of discipleship type of thing, of growing together to do better at what we do. Yeah. So. yeah, we've been talking about this idea of best practices for a long time, you know. We've had a work working group kind of yeah. loosely talking about different ideas and what does it look like to, uh, you know, what does evidence-based practice from a, a medical mission perspective or a healthcare missions perspective look like? Right. And I think one of the best tools that, or one of the best things that has come out of that is, is the journal. Because, you know, I think sometimes we're good at doing, you know, as a faith community, good at doing good work, but sometimes we don't always measure of and, and are able to demonstrate that to you know, the secular world. So I think that's a really good thing with the journal. How, uh, uh, tell me the why behind the journal. Why do you think, you know, why did it come about? Well, uh, to, you know, to meet those needs that you mentioned, um, and I think that there was a burgeoning uh, interest in open access journals uh, at the time that we developed it. Um, and we wanted to have a, a journal that was scholarly, that was multidisciplinary, and that was uh, on global health practice and uh, policy, um, that would uh, look at um, health practice as not just uh, health care delivery, but also uh, mission, and, um, mission and theology of health. So that uh, you know, many of the people that do global health work uh, try to publish articles, but they often are told that uh, that the religious part or the Christian part is off limits mm -hmm. for discussion. So we wanted to create a space for that, um, and then to uh, also develop uh, our our brothers and sisters in the developing world, the global South, in their own scholarship. So creating a, a platform that can where they can publish and start their professional advancement, uh, as well as share their results with the rest of the world and we can learn from them. Huh. So. That's great. Yeah. Uh, what is, tell me this, what have been kind of the biggest challenges in getting this launched and keeping it going? Because it's been a big project. Mm. It's been a big project. Uh, I think, you know, the biggest challenges I think for us are, you know, good high quality articles. Um, you know, moving from uh, the, the inception of the, of the Open Access Journal to PubMed Central Indexing to get a voice in the in the uh, medical literature sure. uh, has been a challenge, uh, and uh, it's it's been uh, amazing how uh, God's raised up uh, reviewers uh, mm -hmm. that have helped serve uh, in a volunteer manner. All of us, all editors, are volunteering for this, but the uh, reviewers have also volunteered, and so they you know work behind the scenes to to give great feedback to our uh, authors who submit our journal articles. Um, and uh, and then I think the funding has been challenging. You know, to be able to we're using a um, we're keeping our overhead down, and we've been able to waive the article processing charge for authors, so that people from uh, developing countries and and developed countries can submit articles without it costing anything. And then of course the articles themselves are open access, so they're easy, they're free to view on online full text. That's great. And there is some real scholarship behind it. I mean, everything that I've seen has has really come out. Uh, you, you know, it, it really looks like 
stuff that we would see in comparable, you know, journals and, and critical care and, and, and medicine in general, I think the stuff that, that's been published thus far has been really impressive to me. Uh, tell me a little bit about the editorial process. What does that look like? Well, that would be uh, uh, somebody, well, we have calls for papers periodically, so we, we might take a themed uh, uh, question, like right now we our current call for papers is on rights and, and justice and health care delivery. Um, we recently had one on uh, refugee crisis, we've had one on conflict, mm -hmm. caring and conflict, uh, on uh, family planning, and we've had one on, uh, you know, various other different topics. So. Um, but we also, we accept uh, articles of, of any topic within the scope of the journal at any time. Sure. So if, a, if an author submits uh, a, an article to us, then the editors look at the article to see it's, if it's within scope. Mm -hmm. And if it's within scope, then we accept it into the peer review process. If it's, okay. if it's a uh, commentary or review article or a original research article, um, uh, and uh, there's other art types of articles as well. So, for example, uh, field reports, which are small vignettes that uh, teach an important point, because we knew that Jesus taught in stories, so stories still have value uh, yeah. in the literature. Um, and then poetry and art as well. So, uh, yeah, so the the author submits the article. If it goes through peer review, we send it to peer review in a double blind fashion. So neither the author nor the reviewers know who each other are and that uh, improves the scholarly out output. Um, and the feedback is received by the authors, they either revise it, or it's accepted, uh, or it's rejected. Uh, and then um, the revision sometimes comes back and it goes back to the reviewers, and ultimately it gets accepted, it goes through a copy editor process and then a, a peer uh, uh, a proofreading, and then it uh, ultimately goes to publication. We publish about two to three times a year. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you, what is the, uh, you know, what kind of is the scope of the journal? What are what are the categories that uh, of areas that you publish in? You, you kind of covered that briefly with, uh, you know, the, uh, but well, the areas that we we cover that are within the scope of the journal will be like uh, community and public health. And that would be like health promotion, health mm -hmm. prevention, nutrition, uh, water, uh, sanitation, you know, community development. Okay. And then the other category would be healthcare service, which would be primary health care, surgical care, uh, hospital-based care, uh, curative care, mental health, palliative care. And then uh, the third category would be organization or administration. That would be you know, finance, policy, advocacy, uh, that type of thing. And then the fourth category would be mission and health. So that would be okay. theology, evangelism, that type of, uh, those type of topics. Uh, integrative topics, and then the final one would be areas of special interest. You know, HIV care, uh, um, tropical diseases, you know, etc. So. so, on the on the website where the journal lies, I'm guessing that there's a place that I could submit an article if if I chose to do that. If I wanted to, if I wanted to send something in for to see if you guys would publish it, how would I do that? Well, you go to uh, journal.cjgh.org. Uh, and that's where you can read and access all the journals. Uh, you can uh, search for topics uh, on the search engine. Um, you can look at the tables of contents from the different issues that we've published since 2014. Um, and then there's a submission page, uh, a drop-down menu submission page. And it tell, it's, uh, there's instructions for authors on there, and what type of formats and style. And, and uh, it also has different categories of uh, articles. Uh, that that people can follow those those directions, and uh, and so it's a fairly simple process. Uh, and also, we invite as as editors, we invite people to contact us directly by email uh, to ask a question or to say run a a, a study by us. Uh, we'd be glad to do that, and also to talk about what it takes to to write a scholarly article. So, for example, if you're um, doing work uh, overseas in an underserved population. Uh, or even you know domestically in the United States or in Eng England or Australia, um, then you would um, uh, study design is really important. Like how do you measure and evaluate something? How do you look at a, a, a particular health problem, right. and how do you address it? And uh, you know, then we would sort of help you through um, 
the process of uh, deciding if it's within scope and um, how to help in the study design as well as the writing of the articles. So. Well, thanks so much, Jim, for taking time out to do this. Sure. One last question. Uh, so, how in the world do you find time to do all of this? Is this process in because you're still working as a physician or hospitalist, or you have a practice as well? Or I have a, I have a practice. I practice family medicine. I teach family medicine at University of Connecticut, and uh, have a wife and uh, three kids. So I'm guessing they miss you a bit. A couple in this grandchildren. Process. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, they miss they miss me from time to time. I, I do travel quite a bit, uh, but uh, I always come home. Well, by the grace of God. So. Well, we appreciate your yeah. your involvement in this project. I think it's a really important one. So, thanks very much. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah.